Welcome back to Power Lunch here on NDTV Profit. Uh, we have a special guest joining us now, B. Ashok, Chairman of the Indian Oil Corporation, special in the context of what the budget has delivered, which certainly suggests interesting times uh, ahead for India's oil and gas sector. Mr. Ashok, many thanks for your time. Let's get straight to it. But first, we have to uh, address the Q3 performance coming through from Indian Oil Corporation. What stands out in the quarter scorecard? No, we had a very uh, excellent performance in the third quarter and I would say that uh, probably in the last nine months of, the, uh, of our operations during the current fiscal, we have, our performance has been uh, exceedingly good. Um, the good things that we need to do is actually take care of our physical performance. I think uh, in terms of physical performance, we have been doing very well. Uh, our refinery throughputs are up uh, by over 15 percent and uh, so is our sales figures uh, which are uh, growing at uh, healthy uh, four and a half percent plus. Uh, so in terms of operations, we are doing all the right things and uh, that probably is helping us uh, in terms of our overall performance. Uh, of course, on, on, the, uh, on the profits, uh, profitability also, we have done exceedingly well. Uh, our profits have grown by 19 percent. I mean, the profit after tax has grown, uh, uh, I mean, our revenues have grown by 19 percent. Our profit after tax has grown by 29 percent during the quarter. And uh, overall, if you see the nine-month period, we have grown, our profit after tax has grown almost by 67 percent. Uh, no doubt, uh, inventory has played a role in this. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, we need to do our physical uh, operations well. And I think operational excellence and uh, better uh, physical performance has helped, along with the inventory gains that we have had. During the quarter, uh, we had an inventory gain of a little over uh, uh, 3,050 crores. And during the year also, we have had uh, quite uh, uh, substantial inventory gains of almost about 9,800 crores, which has uh, actually helped us uh, in the bottom line. So the kind of margin expansion that we've seen in Q3, is it indicative of the margin levels that you could deliver in Q4 as well? Uh, See, one, one, one of the things is uh, probably if the, uh, the crude oil prices remain range bound uh, and if the, the cracks, uh, that is the difference between the product prices and the, uh, and the crude prices remain almost in the same range, uh, then there is no, uh, 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 no reason why we should not do as well as what we have been uh, doing earlier. Uh, we probably may not have any sort of uh, huge inventory gain during the fourth quarter, though some impact of inventory gain could be there during the first month of the fourth quarter. But uh, if the crude oil prices are range bound and if the cracks are also in the same range as what it is today, I think we should be able to do well uh, because we expect our uh, f physical performance to continue. Okay, that brings us to the budget, um, and I'm going to ask you first to pick what you think are the most important budgetary proposals for the oil and gas sector. Yeah, uh, I mean, as far as the oil and gas sector, there were three clear announcements uh, which were made. Uh, number one was, of course, uh, setting up of additional strategic crude uh, reserve uh, in the country in two places, one in Orissa and one in Rajasthan. The second one was uh, on terms of uh, reduction of uh, customs duty on LNG, uh, which uh, definitely will have a direct impact on us uh, from two, uh, for two reasons. One is that we ourselves are large uh, LNG consumers uh, in our refining system, so it will have a direct impact in terms of reducing our costs. The second thing is uh, we are also LNG marketeers, so in terms of uh, our ability to market and uh, customers willing to uh, pay the price, uh, uh, mean willingly and uh, probably that will also help in expanding the growth rate of gas. I think LNG's pricing would, uh, uh, is uh, definitely a favorable thing. And of course the third major uh, announcement which was made was uh, integration of uh, uh, the oil company. Uh, I mean in terms of consolidation of uh, thing. I think that is uh, the one which has probably uh, been the biggest of uh, the lot. And I'll, I'm keeping the biggest of the lot for a little later. I just wanted to understand what are the financial impact calculations of the reduction in the basic customs duty on LNG? Uh, well, I don't have the numbers uh, immediately, uh, but certainly it'll, uh, it'll help us. I mean, because uh, we consume a lot of uh, LNG in our own uh, refining system, and uh, uh, that will keep our own uh, uh, fuel costs down. Uh, I would say that uh, um, uh, almost uh, 
uh, of the, uh, the, the uh, close to two and a half million tons of uh, product that we are uh, generally consuming in terms of LNG, uh, probably 70 to 80 percent of it goes into our own refining system and the rest of it goes to our customers. So to that extent, uh, it will have a direct impact on our uh, margins. Okay, so now let's get to the big announcement. Uh, what, uh, and you know, I understand this is early days yet, but I wanted you to outline the principles that should be kept in mind while creating an integrated public sector oil major, given that you head one, you know, very large company in the space. Uh, let me say that uh, what has been announced in the, in the budget is a, is a very progressive uh, intent uh, moving forward. Uh, one of the reasons could be that uh, you know, while we are large entities by ourselves uh, in, in terms of our size within the country, when you look at global oil companies, uh, probably we are not as large as the uh, global majors. I mean, if you look at the top 10 Fortune uh, 100 companies, uh, I mean, most of them are the oil majors uh, of the world. And uh, in that list, probably we are quite low down. So what would happen is a consolidation and a merger would uh, certainly improve our standing in the global uh, space. And uh, that would also help us to leverage uh, ourselves much better. After all, we are the third largest uh, consumer of energy in the world. And uh, we buy a lot of crude. At the same time, we are also looking uh, very uh, uh, ambitiously in terms of uh, overseas uh, procurement of assets and so on. So in terms of uh, financial strength, a consolidation would certainly help. The second thing I would say is that uh, uh, which, which has been the vision of even Indian oil for the last uh, nearly two decades, an integrated oil company definitely has a, a better stability in terms of performance because we recognize that we are working on an industry in an industry which is highly volatile. Margins in the downstream business are also very cyclical, whether you look at uh, you know, the refined products or whether it's in the petrochemical space and so on. So when you're looking at such cycles, and uh, obviously the cycles uh, mismatch is there between upstream, uh, midstream, downstream, and uh, also in, in, into petrochemicals, uh, in terms of balancing these cycles, uh, uh, an integrated company provides a much more stable uh, financial performance uh, going in the long, uh, long term. So from that si uh, side, I mean, Indian Oil has already uh, always been having a vision that uh, we should be an integrated company and accordingly we have been expanding uh, backwards as well as forwards. Uh, we have a reasonable portfolio of upstream assets uh, uh, as well as, you know, in the downstream, we have become a major player in petrochemicals. We are the second largest player in the country at the moment. And uh, also diversified into natural gas, which is a substitute fuel, where we are again the second largest player in the country. So an integrated entity definitely is a much uh, better or a stronger uh, uh, position than a standalone business. Some of the mergers which have happened uh, as far as Indian oil is concerned uh, in the last uh, decade or so has been one, the merger of Bungaigong uh, refineries with our, ourselves as well as the merger of the large uh, downstream IBP, Indo-Burma Petroleum with uh, IOC. Uh, both these mergers have actually helped us to consolidate our position and also helped those standalone companies uh, as becoming part of a major uh, uh, oil company in terms of their better performance and so on. So there are more such opportunities uh, available in the country. There are uh, still some companies which are operating only in one space and uh, a consolidation within, within the group will, will start, uh, certainly be a good, good starting point. Uh, so that is one thing. The second thing is, I mean, if you are really, uh, as the market is visualizing whether it's going to be an integration of upstream major, downstream major and all that into one entity, I believe that uh, probably the, uh, uh, it's not the idea to merge all the companies as a one single uh, monopoly uh, entity. Uh, definitely each of us are uh, different in our own ways. Uh, we have our own culture, we have our own professionalism, and uh, we all have our own pride uh, in terms of uh, organizations which we have uh, established over, over the last several decades. So there are different models which can be found in terms of integrating. But I would say that the larger uh, issue is how do we leverage our strength as, uh, as players, uh, both in the domestic as well as the international market. 
there are multiple stakeholders i mean you need to consider the uh, the uh, uh, our global uh, position we need to consider our own employees we need to consider our channel partners and of course most of all we need to consider the interest of the consumers at large as well so i am sure that all these will come into play when we are looking at such opportunities but the point is uh, on a principle basis it's always good to have an integrated company Okay, so that was very comprehensive, sir. There are two parts to my next question. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but firstly, you're saying that there are two levels of consolidation and perhaps the market and even us in the media are jumping the gun when we talk about this mega merger of all the big oil marketing companies and the upstream company like ONGC. Second question is, uh, what are the challenges that typically come with such mergers, given that you've done smaller level of mergers at IOC itself, and you, of course, have an understanding of what's happened globally when it comes to big oil and gas mergers? Uh, well, uh, uh, you're absolutely right in terms of consolidation. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a right principle to follow. Uh, when you look at the second part of your question in terms of challenges, see obviously when you are merging companies which have been in existence for long, I mean obviously the cultures are going to be different, the professionalism of each of these entities are going to be different and the character of these organizations can also be different. So uh, you have had internationally also large mergers which have been uh, happening. If you look at companies like say Exxon Mobil or Total, L, Fina and so on, there have been major mergers which have been happening. Even recently Shell had merged uh, British Gas uh, with them. So there are always challenges. I mean culturally companies can be very different. But uh, looking at the overall good, if everybody understands what is the overall good, then probably these mergers need to be handled sensitively uh, so that uh, uh, it can uh, I mean, uh, achieve the desired objective of such mergers. From an Indian oil perspective, the mergers that we have had in the past, whether it is the Bungaiga oil refinery or the IBP, I mean each of those uh, organizations have been in existence for several decades. But I think as an organization, uh, Indian oil as the principal organization, we have recognized those sensitivities and we have uh, handled those mergers with the desired sensitivity. So uh, today uh, both uh, the, the entities which got merged into us are also feeling uh, comfortable that they are part of a bigger group and it has uh, benefited them as a whole. So I think these sensitivities need to be handled and the aspirations of the people in the industry and connected to the industry will also need to be handled in a sensitive manner. So uh, then if everybody understands the overall good that uh, some of these mergers can bring in, then it will work. There are also a lot of stories of uh, mergers which have not been very successful in the world. I'm sure you know about those examples. Probably if culturally organizations are very different, then it is difficult to manage these mergers. Mr. Ashok, I'm going to leave it at that um, as this uh, thought on, or idea sort of, uh, uh, you know, takes larger shape. Uh, it would be lovely to catch up with you again. B. Ashok, Chairman of the Indian Oil Corporation, many thanks for your time. We're going to take a quick uh, break. When we return, the U.S. Fed, uh, no moves there. Uh, what's the backdrop, uh, the economic backdrop in the United States, according to the Fed?